welcome to the channel. Today I thought I'd do a little video combining two films by one filmmaker and why you should watch films by Uri Hertz. There's one of these quite famous and one of them's a recent release and I'm going to talk about principally the two releases on the same label which is Second Run. And the two releases are The Cremator and Beauty and the Beast which I've turned the co cover of so that you can see what it literally translates as which is the Virgin and the Monster. And we'll start with The Cremator. It's the more famous of the two films. And it tells the story of a man who runs a cremation centre. A creepy man. A person that's very open to influence, I think it's fair to say. As he espouses his own beliefs through his actions. And also, you're not sure if you trust this man or like this man. He is a man with a family. He's got a wife, a son, a daughter. And then he has some people that work for him, people that are on the outside trying to influence him. And it all kind of makes this very creepy, almost a horror film, for your pleasure. It's shot in like a fisheye lens, in parts of it where people are chasing things through, you're going in the rooms and seeing the, 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 the rooms where the cremation happens and where the coffins are laid before they get cremated. And Mr. Copper Kingle, who is the central character. Well, he's somebody that that seems to collect things or has very lofty opinion of his version of life compared to other, other people. He's constantly judging them. He's constantly saying what people should and should not be doing with their time. He has these people on the outside that question, given that it's a Czech film, but they question whether his Czech heritage is up to scratch, so to speak. And are, while not saying Nazis, they are suggesting that the party are looking for people with some German blood and that to celebrate their German heritage. And Mr. Kupferkingel has, uh, has some German blood in him and he embraces this uh, and adds this to some of the other influences of people from the outside. It's creepy. It's really moody. It's shot in monochrome. And it's also really effective in how it creates and shoots the thing as you go along. You get some great central performances. The, the, the main actor who does Mr. Copper Kingle is just captivating. He, all the little mannerisms, which it would seem that he put these on himself, carrying a little comb and carefully manicuring his hair that doesn't seem to move at any stage throughout the film anyway. Uh, and you have... Jerry Menzel is even in the film as one of his helpers, Mr. Dvorak. And he is a man that, while judgmental of others, isn't without his faults. He's shown to be a man full of them, actually. He has lots of vices, he has lots of things that he has nearly like a secret life on the side. And Hertz uses, employs some really interesting ideas in film in, the, in this there's there's a scene with uh, with the lady of the night let's say let's call her what she is but she's played by the same actress actually as his wife and you, you miss it and it was only pointed out in, in the extras and I, I kind of stopped and paused and went that's really quite clever because you know it works on so many different levels and therefore you have this film The Creator Creator that is highly celebrated. Lots of people are fans of it. It's had a release both in second run and on Criterion. I actually watched the, the extras from both discs. This is one of these releases that it's worth double dipping for. Uh, I believe the Criterion transfer is in your transfer or in your restoration. So there's that. It's a pretty good looking film anyway. Uh, but both sets of extras add something different to it. I mean, the second run one has the production book podcast, which is amazing. It has a commentary by Kat Ellinger, amazing. And it has a short film. And the Criterion release has, you know, a documentary on the, the person that wrote the music or produced the music. But the best part of it is it has this little, uh, 
documentary where <laughs> Jurai Hertz takes a film crew around some of the locations that they shot this thing in, including a crematorium where they have been holding like the cremator uh, shows of the film over years to celebrate certain milestones both of the film and the crematorium and they celebrate the fact that it was shot there and that the thing's been updated etc it's absolutely wonderful you get to see just how ordinary a person Mr Hertz is and how the people around there don't know him but then some do know him etc it's just it's a lovely extra and a, a, a real treat I think to watch especially off that disc so that's the cremator and the other one is Beauty and the Beast and it's basically a retelling of Beauty and the Beast or like I alluded to beforehand the the Czech translation that we have here is Pana and Netvor which actually means Virgin and the Monster so rather than the Beauty and the Beast is Virgin and the Monster and it Hertz was a bit conflicted about making this because he didn't want to do like a remake of what he considered was an already great version of this story which was Jean Cocteau's uh, La Belle La Bette which I've seen that has sort of gothic roots in its the Beauty and the Beast telling. This one's very gothic. Uh, the release of the second one, I think it's worth to say, has, it's not a great or a fancy restoration that's been done on this. The film looks better as it goes along. You know, it, it, it seems to be in better condition as it goes along. I do feel like it's a film that if somebody did a proper rest restoration on it, did a real good colour grade, got the blacks and the darkness out there, this thing would sing even more. Because it is very, it's very dark. It's extremely dark. It's shot in colour, but it is a dark telling of the story where... Some of the differences from the classic story that you may have heard, the father has fallen on hard times. He has two stepdaughters that are seen there. It's a bit like a, a Cinderella twist in that they're the ugly stepsisters. Uh, and then Beauty, uh, Juliet, as she's called in this, is very much estranged. And they look down on her and make fun of her for just being good and wholesome as, as the story classically is told. But he goes to sell some paintings and one of the paintings that he goes to sell is a portrait of his first wife who is Juliet's mother and the beast buys it and gives him a lot of coins and gold and riches etc for it but on the way out he decides to pick for Juliet a rose and there's the rose from the classic Beauty and the Beast story in there and the beast takes offence and I'm taking the rose and Bissy says you can stay here or give me one of your daughters or kin instead and of course the story goes Juliet or Beauty goes and takes his place and she goes into the, the grounds of the castle and doesn't and it's just only knows the beast by voice and there the whole thing happens with the romance etc but it's not a classic beast which in previous forms was mostly like a lion or a, a bear or something like that this is a a bird form is the beast and it's a bit creepy looking it oh it, it really does look shocking even compared to the kind of lion ones that we've seen in other versions this one very very jarring and as how it stands out it's also very gory in places the the prologue at the start where the the cart gets uh knocked over and taken over there's just a bloodbath in and um apparently when this was shown in czechoslovakia at the time it was kind of <laughs> it was kind of supposed to be a fairy tale and of course kids went with their parents to see it in the cinema and left the cinema crying after 15 minutes absolutely horrified at the blood and guts had to go it hurts for making this horrific horror film um but it doesn't it doesn't last the whole way through it but it's a film that i think about two-thirds of the way through I, I really wasn't sold on as being a very good version of of beauty and the beast i i, I thought there was some liberties taken uh, with the traditional story that I don't, didn't think really benefited from. By the time we got to the end, I'd come full circle on it to the point where I, I accepted that this film could be considered beautiful. If this was a better restoration, I think we'd be talking about just how beautiful every frame is a picture kind of movie where everything's shot. They use the angles of the cameras very well around the, 
the angular parts of this building or this castle where it is very dark there's a creepiness of the the servants in the castle as well there's the the beast himself who almost seems to be schizophrenic he's talking to himself at many cases and places through it and it ends up being released that as usual i think is fantastic it's not quite at the level of the cremator i don't think anybody would would confuse the two i think the filmmaking techniques etc from the cremator stand the test of time a bit more i think you can see that possibly with a bit more budget or a bit more access to better equipment etc that hurts could have done even more with the Virgin and the Monster of the Beauty and the Beast if he'd have been allowed to. But aside from that, you get something that sits very nicely at the far end of the other versions of Beauty and the Beast that you've seen. So this is very much on the horror side. There's the Disney one on the other end, which is a great film. And then you have the Cocteau one that sits, sits in, in the middle. And I think all are excellent and worthy of your time. There's another short film on this disc that is, I think, less successful or less less watchable than, than say, Junk Shop. Um, and you get another audio uh, projection booth podcast as well, which is always great to hear. Although you could just listen to those things outside of the release. So, there's your two films from Uri Hertz. There is a second on DVD release called Morgana, which I've got sort of coming to me at some stage uh, I'm eager to delve into more especially for a director that really was not given the opportunity of some other others he was a man who applied to go to film school and, and was turned down and he ended up having to go a different route to get to where he wanted to go he had to go to puppet theatre and, and to animation and make his way in through there with Jan Svankmeyer etc and come through with an awful lot of those characters that is not the traditional route that many of the other people from the Czech New Wave went through, through the film school and going through together. So he's an interesting character that I think is evidenced by that Criterion Extra, if you can catch it. And uh, yeah, check them out. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.